Now, apparently, between my adrenaline-high brain and Tim's intoxicated brain, we thought we did a better job at cleaning than we actually did. For starters, the holes in my back had left a severely large trail of blood all around the deli. Additionally, the retcher left a snail trail wherever its parts drug themselves. The official story was that I had forgotten my phone and had injured myself in the back room. Truth be told, aside from the absolute wreck that the deli was in, not even the owners had the foggiest of ideas as to what went down that night. I eventually took their security tapes, you know, incriminating evidence and all. My injuries had netted me an additional three days off at the very end of my vacation on account of my wounds splitting back open when I tried to work the meat slicer. Apparently, customers don't want someone whose uniform shirt is drenched in blood to cut their lunch meat. Go figure, right? One very long injury report later, and I was on paid leave until my wounds healed 100%. The owners asked me a large amount of times what exactly happened that night. I stuck to the official police report. It's a very good thing that they have no idea that I'm narrating this book on YouTube, huh? The last four entries have promptly been burned. Again, incriminating evidence and all. Tim had been visiting me every now and again, sometimes bringing me snacks that he was unsure if he had even paid for or not, and sometimes just chilling with me and playing video games. This was great. However, he had work, and I was often left alone. I had a considerable amount of time to write more in the handbook, and I'll be transcribing these in the near future. On one particular day that Tim had visited me, he had changed a lot. He was zoinked out that day and accidentally let slip some very interesting information. I asked him if he had stoner senses, if he knew that his junk food was in danger alongside of his buddy. Nah, man, I was just chillin' playing the DS. That weirdo from Picture Chat told me that you were in trouble. He referred to you by your sticker and everything, man. I was completely baffled. You're just telling me this now, Tim? Yeah, but don't tell Chase. He told me to throw it away. I just stared at him for a solid five minutes before it registered what he had done. And as if that little tidbit of information clicked into place, he decided that now was a good time to go home and take a nap. Tim is a very strange man, but he's my best bud, so. The painkillers that I had saved from the first fight with Stanley helped to ease the pain a little bit, but man did they make me trip out. The couple of days that I was on them flew by in a haze. People coming and going, visiting me and bringing food. Everything zipping by in a flash. I think at one point, even Stanley came to visit me. Or at least I imagined he did. Now, I would have been more startled by it, if not for his disguise, being a set of Groucho Marx glasses, complete with fuzzy mustache. Now, I've seen some shit in my day, but nothing as downright weird as that. I just went to sleep. Tomorrow is my first day back to work. My wounds have healed fairly well, but they're going to leave some mad scarring. I'll update you all with some more entries as I go. Until then, just remember, nothing in this world is any bit how it seems. The weird thing is, though, as I sit here trying to record this, I can see a set of Groucho Marx glasses on my shelf that I do not remember owning. You know, incriminating evidence and all.